Hey guys, welcome back to another Life Can Explain video. I've changed my uh, YouTube name to maybe be a little bit more friendly for the YouTube algorithm and already gained some subscribers just by changing the name, so maybe so maybe it worked. Good checks of course easy open. 76 is a frequency defend versus the smaller size. So it's a recreation, I think I would always call. When the button flats, however, as well, it gets a bit ugly. Generally speaking, you have to be a lot tighter. And I think our hand is quite often pretty dominated, so I would maybe even rather call a hand like maybe 5 for off than 7 6 off. This guy starts off with the donk, which is, of course, pretty weird. Pretty close, I think I'm just going to call. Could still be donking random 10x, 5x. Of course, not laughing the spot. And not trying to check down versus his 10x. Interesting to flat face a flat from cutoff. Usually, most people play free but default strategies in those positions. Oh, okay, very interesting how I played that hand. Donk the flush trend then trapped twice. So certainly worth taking a note if you were to play the guy more often. With the queens far away, I think uh, we just try to check it down and versus any aggression we fold, but maybe. We see an interesting showdown. On the high roll, we will go for the call. I think 5 for suited is a mix in those positions. And don't think there is anything we can do on this flop. And seven off is too weak. Here versus the min race. And the queen 10 suited could get in the squeezing range sometimes. I think going something like drive from five is probably fine. This is a four bet I would fold. And unfortunately we do face the four bet. And King Sam's with this close here, he goes for a bigger free bet sizing, like 11.5 if I went like 10 big, big plans, maybe 11 big plans. I think the hand would get in there, but with the high rake at 200 zone and the sizing being bigger, I think we just fold. If I suit it will be a defend. Part where you would expect a bigger sizing, three quarter, going to half pot something like that. And when it goes check check, there are a wide variety of strategies you could use here. You could go for a block strategy. I personally go for a 75. Still value betting 9x, um, but not going too crazy with those sort of hands. So on a low roller, we'll go for a check. And table two. The hand can certainly bet, but without the back the flush threat will be played more passively. But it's nice to start betting a hand like ace4, I already get him to fold this. Get him to fold like ace6 to ace10 probably. And on the river, I don't think I want an overbet, so I would just play 75 a block here. Because my super strong hands don't really need an over, but if I have a boat or a flush, I could check raise, or he would also be incentivized to raise an 8 on the river. So I don't think you need an over, but here. But that could be wrong, perhaps like exactly 8x wants to over, but. But. Yeah. Mm, straights, we also have some straights. Yeah, I might be wrong. I think over, but in the river would actually be, be, be a fine, fine strategy.
because it's, yeah, I think all bits are fine. Again, for the action, and not much that we can do. But that hits the small blend flatter pretty much, but then again, the small blend is a recreational player, so it's quite likely that he could just have a way too wide of a flatting range. But when the board is has two low cards, I'm always very uh, worried that the small blind might have hit a strong hand, as I think fours, deuces, threes, fives are very natural flats in the small blind. with the asking. And the guy called off King 9. Yeah, I don't think he's good here a lot. Um, table 2, it is a mix between forward and call. And we roll a forward. Unfortunately, getting jammed on, we can't do much. But calling too much out of position is also not really an interesting prospect. Table 1, I think, a board where I can bet half pot with range. Button big blind is for sure with, with range because the big blind doesn't have ace queen in those positions, he does have ace queen off. But I think it's just still a great board for, for MP. Just have all the strong hands here, the 6, 7, 5, 4 sort of hands way more often. S9 would be a mix call or forward if the button had decided to free bet. Do not face the forward with the S King. In theory, you think you're almost pure jam S King when you get forward. Face the cold forward, which is even stronger. Table 1, I think those A side boards, plan we blind, are not too terrible if you play a 25% or check strategy. On a 2 tone board, you can't range bet, but I think on a middle roll, King check is. Okay, to bet. And it's not great, but I think we just chip in the Ace King and hope for a fold. If we get called, that's a great, that's a great outcome. Likely a recreational player flatting in the cutoff. So um, I think I'm more incentivized to call King 2 suited now. A hand that can make a very strong hand motivate. And of course, easy step fold. I don't think the cutoff should, uh, the MP should really have a betting range here, but also an unknown player to me, so perhaps he's also a recreational player. Eight is close, 
but that ball hits the cutoff letting range, the cutoff letting range, uh, about as good as it gets. So be very careful as the middle position player. Nine eight is just a bit too weak to call. Pocket is maybe we can get something going now. In those positions, I think those low boards are actually great for us because you shouldn't have deuces or threes uh, much at all. So our overpass do extremely well and also Ace-King is still a strong hand. Also a fantastic turn. Aces is of course a hand that could also sometimes check, blocks his checkback range. With the Ace in spades, I make it less likely that there is a float that is gonna bluff, so I think with this combo I prefer betting. As it can't have a hand like ace check and spade, ace queen and spade, that could call the flop and now start um, stabbing. So I think with my combo I prefer going bet, bet, bet. And we should have the best hand here a lot. Also pocket nines is probably a hand that has to fold a bunch on the turn. So pocket eights is of course a hand you can have, but other than that you should be mainly mostly good. And also in those tight positions you want to slow play aces less than let's say tens or checks, because he is going to have queens a lot, like even kings should be called at, uh, at the frequency and not forward. So when you have aces, you want to take quite often a more aggressive, um, a more aggressive strategy than compared to a small blind button. And with tens, you don't really want to play for stacks. Tens would be a hand that has to start uh, checking the turn, I think. Table two, we will of course start with a call. Those Acer boards are not really range bet boards from the big plant when you free bet. Because, um, because his range is as hands like King 10 off, Queen 7 suited, sort of hands that don't really have the dry Ace side textures. And facing the check, I think we also mainly go for the check back. We are quite polarized to probably like ace queen plus and ace queen also can't always bet, otherwise you could always check ace king and would always get stacks in, which is not great. Or I could jam the river really big, so certainly need to have a strong check back range here. And of course a fantastic river. And now we could certainly have some champs because we do have ace check, we have king queen, that will float on the flop. On a low roll and heavily blocking the calling range, I'm going to go for 75. And I think I would bet any ace here, or let's say at least, maybe not ace 5, but ace 9, ace 8 for sure. If you face the jam, we do have to call, could run into tens, but this is what it is. A said this was 2.3, I think it's close. Can probably call as a 2.3. And if you face a small bet, I will check with this quite often. And with a bigger bet, it still will, it will still get in there. And I would choose a small check with sizing because we are not polarizing ourselves to to super plus, but we still want to raise hands like eight x. Also, hand like eight seven with a backdoor flush would be a nice raise. And I do in fact roll pretty big. So I 
so I will go for the small check raise. We don't need a big check raise sizing here. I think a lot of people make this mistake to check raise here to like 14, 15, 16 big plans. If he has a hand like King 10, King Jack off, the sizing is like already enough to, to punish him when he see puts too much air. While if the board was an ace side board, let's say it was ace a3 rainbow, you would want to check with a bigger sizing, like a pot sizing or even bigger value. You, you're already seeing um, that you have two pair plus. Likely recreational player in the small plant. Think uh, squeezing is really uh, it's a really nice strategy here, but with ace 2 suited, I think I would rather call. Um, but uh, if I had like ace 4, ace 5, ace 7 suited, king queen off, king check off, I think those hands are great squeezes when the small blind uh, flats too much. And a part that we really don't hit much, as I already said, uh, I would squeeze also a lot of the offsuit top pairs, so I really don't hit this part too much in my check call range. And turn sizing would be over better check, and I think like queen, queen 10 plus could start value better, maybe even queen 9 plus because it checked so quickly. And just thinking if I want to put ace twos in there. I don't hate it, versus the snap check, I think he has 10s, 9s, 8s so often, which he probably folds. And he also could call a hand like, let's say, as ace king as 10. <laughs> That's interesting. I don't think he ever has king 10 after checking back so quickly. Table 2 on a lower only go for check back. I don't have great blockers, but the river does, of course, complete a lot of my draws. I think I'll go for the bluff. A little bit afraid of the, the small plant. And facing the big step, I think. My hand is close, but I would rather have a club and on a low roll I go for the fold. Like that play is certainly out of line, but you want to be out of line when you play versus players who give away information and I think when he when he snap check the, the flop back, I think his range is just uh, pretty capped and weak and uh, I don't think he snap checks back King 10. So I can just yeah, start over bluffing him, going thinner for value, do whatever I want basically. Of course, a little bit afraid of the small band who overcalled, but thankfully we got the fold. So, yeah, this main takeaway <laughs> from this video so far is balance, uh, balance the timing. I mean, perhaps he is snap checking always, but I, I'm just not really a believer. Face a min free bet from a recreational player. Seems pretty tight. Another guy I don't know over calls. I mean, there's only one player I think is just the call. Forward folding would suck pretty bad. And we get the great price, so of course we can't ever fold. And that's a nice flop. Wonder how aggressive we want to play. I mean, I don't really. Okay, in such checks. I think would have gone for the check Chris, because it, if he has a better hand, he has a better hand, but. I want to put in the maximum amount of money versus his weaker hands. I mean, I'm pretty polarized here, but we are multi ways, so I don't think I want to go completely overboard. Perhaps a small overbed sizing. Table 1, I think you can just range bet this sort of uh, texture. I mean, I'm not betting anything that's not an ace, so I don't think like betting a smaller sizing that's a good ace, I should say. So I don't think betting a smaller sizing is great. And a small orbit, I think, is, is fine, even multi way here. 
And again, you could see that the timing tab was very real from the recreational player. Uh, it's really close. Snap checking back the flop and yeah, just uh, hit a snap forward. So when we don't have the nuts, you could also start bluffing a hand like I, I don't think you would want to bluff a hand like let's say a random queen check in diamonds, king check in diamonds because his folds are going, going to be exactly those sort of holdings, or pocket kings, pocket checks. But let's say you had deuces or threes or, or some low pocket pair, I think would be a, a great candidate to start bluffing already on the turn. Unblocking his folds. And this is the same guy who played, okay. When you're called forward, you want to go smaller. So I think sizing wise, like 20 to 21 is good here. I think 21 is probably fine. Perhaps even a bit too big. Versus the jam, I'm in a pretty ugly spot. Don't think this is like a snap call. Those low boards versus the big plant when he doesn't donk are just super high frequency checkbacks, so let's do just that. We do face the jam. Does he even jam? Like how much is king does he jam here? Does he jam aces? That's the, the, that's the real question here. Let me call. Not really sure. What to do on table one? Probably close. If he's too passive if he's king and champs is uh, and champs is too much, it's bad to call. You should never jam checks. I think I go for the fold. And here I face uh, SND5. I could consider jamming here for sure. I mean, he does have more 7x than I have. Having an 8 is pretty nice. I'm gonna go for the jam. Perhaps he was inducing with a 7. I sent if he did. Board on which we have to do a decent amount of checking in those positions because we don't really have deuces or threes, but on a high road I will still go for the C bet. And turn is an over check spot, and I think E6 probably orbits most of the time, I would imagine. Let's say the flush draw like 10-9, uh, 10, 10 8. I think those would be better check candidates. Blocking pocket 10s, pocket 9s, also a weaker draw often wants to take a more passive line as well. And although the weakest flush draws are playing aggressive again because they get to fold better flush draws on the turn, so often the weakest and the best flush draws bet the most and the medium ones check more often. But yeah, that's just a, a, a protoristic. King free is open. That's a free bet that will be close. It, it does choose the smaller sizing, so I think we will stick around. Low frequency forwarding, really calling now. If you went like 8 to 8.5, uh, it would shift more towards fold. And this is an interesting texture. <laughs> I was actually studying uh, not, not that long ago. He can range bet here for a small sizing. He chooses to not do that. Interesting. Probably my sizing should be 75 check, and I imagine my hand wants to bet most of the time. Don't think I want to over bet now. You could certainly have a hand like 10 lines with the check lines with the pocket lines. Um, just call. 
Who is my queen X? Probably me, right? Like he has to fold. His queen is king. Fortunately, running out of time. Would have liked to have a little bit more time to think there. I mean, I also want to have some gems with king queen region. Queen turn off, okay, in a sense. the three quarter step. I think I can fold. I'm gonna sit out here real quick and talk through the, the hand because it was quite interesting. Mainly going to go for the checkback. I play quite a polarized super strategy on those is hypods. And yeah the my thinking was that my hand actually has decent blockers. I usually don't want to bluff the, the flush draws but first of all is a snap checking back there is a flush draw probably not to go back to the theme of timing tells and Second of all, I, I don't block is 10 suited or is check suited, which would both be hands that would fold the river. Turn, I think, is here 75 check. And yeah, so it's quite nice that I don't block is a hand like is 10 suited, which would, which would always fold the river. But I don't know if I had take, if I have taken the correct sizing. I was thinking that if I have a queen, I would want to bet like this. Like, but in too small, it just gets to always call for the job, so I would think this sizing in a jam would have been my strategy. But yeah, I didn't have too much time to think it all through, but I still don't I don't mind my play. And video going on for quite some time already, so Let's wait for some more interesting spots to come up and then we can call it the video. Versus the 2x open under gun, I think is it has to call. And this is a texture where you should not see that much at all. So certainly a board where I also if it is king, is queen, you don't want to make the mistake and just always see that it's just a really easily exploitable strategy. And for us, he will also be being very polarized. So our hand always checks on a turn and we'll play more of a check strategy. He goes for delay small, which is fine. Although I actually think a bigger set delay sizing in those positions is a better strategy because he doesn't really have much. Uh, I mean, he has some 9x, he has some pairs to but it's certainly a fine strategy. I'm always going to click call and could consider dunking the river deck. Not, not because of the eight, but because it's a bit small and I certainly can have... I can take some of my a and start dunking the river, but I think it has to be a better one. Like Let's say the ace check is 10, ace queen. Those sort of hands could consider dunking. And here I think I just could check. And facing the bigger bet, no roll no, 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 for the call. And I imagine I go for the check raise. Face the pot bet. I think over pairs still have to call just because they have uh, outs versus the more outs versus the two pair region. Let's say the hand like check 10, queen 10, king 10, those hands all can consider folding and he had is 9 off which is of course the board of line. Beginning from the pre-flop call, I mean staring the flop is certainly fine and yeah, I don't love to orbit in the turn, I mean the is not as goes but the 9 just blocks 10 lines of the pocket lines which always fold so I think that play is quite out of line. So yeah going to play for the next big blind and then call the session facing the really big forwards here. I think I'm yeah, deeper. But the guy is quite passive because just forward.
This is the min open. You would really like to have a flatting range on the button. Do this probably to, if this guy also in there. I wonder if I want to flat do this more or less because I'm often I'm more often going to be set under set, I guess. I'm just gonna go for the fold. And yeah, thanks guys for watching. Uh, see you in the next one. Bye.